We have the great pleasure of being joined this afternoon by Liza Featherstone. Liza is a staff writer and columnist at Jacobin and the New Republic. Her work can also be read in The Nation, and she is the author of Divining Desire Focus Groups and the Culture of Consultation. Liza, thank you so much for making the time. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'm a big fan. It's great to talk to you. I've read a ton of your work uh, across the many platforms that you can be found in. We're here to talk today about your latest piece about the post-presidency uh, of Barack Obama. Um, Jacobin is known for its very straightforward headlines, and this is no exception. Barack Obama has been one of the worst ex-presidents ever, you say. Um, and um, I have some specific questions planned, um, but I just want to start by uh, paraphrasing a, a, a small quote. You do argue in the piece that his ex-presidency has been, quote, strikingly bereft of public spiritedness. Um, and I think that's right on the money. Uh, but I would say it's very consistent with his actual presidency. Like, mm -hmm. I think his post-presidency has been, sadly, almost as productive as <laughs> his time in office. <laughs> um, you know, um, because I just think he used his platform as president to be more of a cultural figurehead, more of a role model, right, mm -hmm. of sorts, than uh, an actual, like, political leader. Um, and mm -hmm. so, you know, that was one of the thoughts that I had um, but why don't you, if you want to respond to that, you can, or if you want to just kind of start by summarizing the thesis of the piece. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, a lot of people um, who um, share our politics made that comment on the piece. Uh, I mean, or, I mean, and uh, um, that, you know, his, his presidency was terrible. So why wouldn't his ex-presidency be terrible? Um, and, um, and, you know, I think that's valid and true. Um, but, um, but I guess um, I, I didn't, I don't think his, his presidency was a standout in its terribleness. You know, like, like I think that um, generally speaking, the U S president is, um, some some far left group used to um, in their newspaper refer to the U.S. president as the chief executive of the world bourgeoisie, and that's true. The, the, the U.S. president is always the chief executive of the ruling class of the whole world. So, you know, they're never um, going to be. They're never um, in the arrangements that we currently have in our society. They're not a tribune of the people. They just, they never are. Um, and um, and so in that way, I, I didn't think that Barack Obama's presidency um, really stood out. Not to say that there is nothing specific to say about how bad it was. There's a lot to say about that. Um, but just I, I wouldn't say that it I wouldn't say that it historically um, stood out in, in in its in its badness. But I I did think that. Um, his ex-presidency is interesting in um, in that you know ex-presidents usually have um, offer more of a a nod to the obligation to serve the public. You know, like um, I mean, you know, like you know George W. Bush and Bush Senior would you know raise money you know in you know after some disaster they would raise money for the victims and otherwise they would keep a you know a fairly low profile um jimmy carter i mean built homes for homeless people traveled to venezuela to defend uh, you know to def defend their election process against the united states you know i mean you know kind of he's a standout in in, in another way as an ex president um, again, very different from how he was as a, um, a, a president, which was completely unremarkable, right? Um, so, so, so there's a certain, there's generally understood to be a sort of um, obligation that ex-presidents have, you know, that they really would be, um, they, they really would be nobody without um, all the trust that the, in, public and the taxpayers have had invested in them over the years so they kind of feel they that they have to give back a bit now bill now the clintons bill and hillary clinton um sort of started this trend of um of using the ex-presidency to amass enormous amounts of wealth 
um, and um, and um, and be um, um, and be real, um, you know, parasites on the body po po politic um, in that way. But even they, you know, like they've got their foundation, you know, and there's this sort of pretense um, again of giving back. Right. Um, and um, and Obama really went the amass enormous amounts of wealth and become um, a part of the um, the the real um, global money class um, without so much of the giving back. <laughs> and I found, <laughs> and and I think that that. Um, is interesting and was worth a, w worth noting. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that is a great point. Um, and again, and nothing I, think, I nothing I have said should be taken as praise of any of these previous presidents. They're obviously all terrible. Oh uh, <laughs> no, of course. Don't worry. <laughs> so, <laughs> like I, 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 it's just more. I was more of a commentary on sort of the the lack of you know, the, 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 the sort of naked lack of pretense. Like, you know, I'm just basically going to be um, lounging on Richard Branson's yacht now. Yeah, and I think that is especially striking given uh, how his presidency ended and who his successor was. Yes, right? It'd be one thing exactly. if he passed the ball off to, you know, uh, uh, so, you know, some other Democrat and yeah. just c c sort of ride off, you know, in, into the sunset and OK, now it's their turn. That's um, right. But no, I mean, and especially like the the kind of Democrat, the kind of liberal who is really spellbound by everything he says was was shitting their pants on Inauguration Day, Absolutely. you know, and and, and, he, and then he goes off. I mean, like days later, he's photographed on the jet ski you know, out on, you know, yeah. on Branson's Island. And yeah. I think that 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 is what makes it really striking is just the the perception of what was at stake in his post presidency and that's why yeah. i would connect it especially to his presidency because look he yeah. came in after 8 years of just a horrifically awful bush years um yeah. and 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 he came in with this huge opportunity that's what makes yeah. his failure as presidency stand out to me is he came in with a mandate a 70% favorability rating Yep. Uh, a 60 seat supermajority in the Senate. They're talking about, oh, we're going to try and codify Roe v. Wade now that they can't mm -hmm. do it because of the filibuster. Well, they had a chance to do it in 2009. Right. Yeah. And so like all the opportunity and all the risk just makes his sort of like you said, it's just sort of like, you know, disregard yeah. um, of his of, of any sense of like public duty all the more striking, I think. Yeah, no, I think you're right, and and there was um and there and there was a, a real um there was a real um failure to, um on on his part to, um, you know, like I I mean to invest in um other you, you know in victories by other Democrats you know during the you know during during his presidency um to um you know to build support for um, any kind of progressive policies, you know, that might've helped to um, beat Trump in 2016 to enact progressive policies that might've right. helped, you know? Um, so, you know, any of that, you, you, you know, you're absolutely right. Um, and, and, uh, and, and I think that um, the, um, you know, to, to keeping, keeping such a low profile um, while um, you know, while, um, you know, most people left of center in this country were um, more worried about politics and more worried about um, the state of the world um, than they've ever been, you know, from 2016 to 2020, it's absolutely, um, it's, it's absolutely cast, um, um, cast it into special relief. Um, and so um, with that in mind, I thought it was particularly striking that um, that the moment that he sees as, oh, this is my I have to get involved moment, you know, the moment that he has to suddenly um, become a, um, a really big player, two moments. Um, one, um, the... Um, you know, the, the country is in the middle of a tremendous uprising last summer, people in the streets over, um, over racist brut police brutality, 
Um, but so much more than that, right? I mean, it's like, I mean, you know, that's like a tremendous thing in itself, like people were being killed. Um, but, um, but, but there, there are these, you know, these uprisings were, um, were really about um, the, um, like, the, just the, the immiseration and poverty and exploitation of a large, um, of a very large group of people in America. And, uh, um, and he's, uh, um, and so, you know, the, um, the NBA players, bas professional basketball players um, were, are, are like, well, we should do something in support of this movement, right? You know, what, I, what can, you know, because we're, uh, we're tremendously rich and um, our labor power really means a lot. Um, and, um, and our, um, so much of our, um, our fans and, you know, market value come from the very communities that are protesting right now, you know, black communities, right? And uh, um, so they so they discuss they decide to um, walk walk out um, you know um, go on strike, um, and um, that's the first moment Obama gets involved in politics, you know, during his post presidency. Not to say you know like I like you know I'm sure, like you know that he never raised his voice over any um, you know policy of the Trump administration. But he was pretty quiet. Um, but in this, you know, he, he gets involved. He calls LeBron James. He calls the head of the basketball players union um, and um, talks to them and they get back on the court. Um, second, well, it's possible. I mean, that was midsummer. It's possible he had a birthday party planned and he wanted to watch the game. <laughs> No <laughs> doubt. Yes. yes. So he's like, Listen, I'm having a couple hundred people over my house. I promised them we were going to be able to watch <laughs> basketball. And now you're fucking me up. That's a good point. Um, yes. what I mean, the timelines kind of match up. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. These things, <laughs> these things are occurring at a suspiciously similar yeah, exactly, time. Yeah. Maybe it all comes down to the Obama birthday party. Birthday. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, I, mean, I, I personally appreciate his lack of civic commitment. You know, Carter, <laughs> Carter makes you feel guilty. Right. That's yeah, true. you look at Carter and it's like, man, what am I doing? This guy survived brain cancer. He's still out there with a <laughs> hammer, know. like I building <laughs> houses for the homeless. What am I, I, what am I doing over here? I know. He makes that, nonsense. He, he makes even all of us seem like assholes. Right. Um, uh, and, then, and then you look at Obama, you can kind of feel like moral superior the moral superiority of a jerry springer audience member you know you're, you're like <laughs> i'm better than that guy right, exactly. I mean, you know. that's right <laughs> and he was the president <laughs> right yeah, exactly. and i consider myself as moral superior that's I, I would definitely if i were gonna be enough of an asshole to throw that birthday party i definitely wouldn't be canceling yeah. the people who got me to the, into that position from the list when I had to downsize it for optics. That's right. I, That's I would right. not have been been That's dispatching right. Axelrod. <laughs> That's right. Of that list. No, 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 no. That's true. Yeah, maybe you've hit on why Obama is so much more popular than Jimmy Carter. <laughs> like maybe he's just like maybe he's just much more relatable. You know, because well, like, um, we're all very flawed human beings. He 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 doesn't yeah. he doesn't lay down a standard you feel like you have to aspire to yeah right yeah he's like, he's like the personal trainer is like double cheeseburger double schmeese burger that's you right. deserve it that's you right. earned it that's right yeah the guy who shows up to your personal training session and is obviously not fit himself yes but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um yeah. but but really i mean it's an extension of the the west wing nature of his presidency isn't it i mean yes. it's all it's yeah. all style, no substance, just... Uh, yeah, no, and... that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And, and then I, I just, to, to finish my thought, the uh, other thing is this, this, it's striking that the second time he gets involved in politics in his post-presidency, and, you know, I know that he phone banked um, for, um, um, I know that he, for <laughs> whoever it was, Biden, <laughs> Um, like I know, I know he did that, um, but uh, you know, honestly, um, a lot of us did that. 
you know, and yeah. and I, I think his uh, the amount of time that he spent campaigning for Biden even was strikingly um, like little. Um, so the next time he oh, really he, gets, he had parasailing with Branson. Too. That's right. Yeah, too. Yeah, it was, it was busy. And you know, obviously, I'd rather go parasailing than campaign for Biden too. <laughs> Getting back to the relatability, <laughs> but he had some responsibilities <laughs> as the you know, uh, given given the cultural and political place that he holds in our society. Um, so the next time he gets involved in politics um, is um, you know where it looks like um, it looks like Bernie Sanders has a good chance of winning the Democratic primary. This is where we remember in fe around February um, 2020. Um, and, um, um, and the, um, the ruling class mobilizes. Um, um, what are we gonna do? We have to stop this from happening um, again. Obama is their man. Um, you know, um, even more important than stopping a basketball strike to the ruling class <laughs> was yeah. stopping Bernie Sanders from becoming president. <laughs> you know, so, um, so um, o Obama gets involved. He gets um, all these other all these other centrist narcissists to, um, you know, look above their petty self interest and um, in and you know appeal a look at the broader. Um, class project here. Bernie Sanders must be defeated, um, and um, and they all drop out and endorse Joe Biden, um, and um, and um, you know the rest is history. Um, later on, actually, Obama does get involved and in phone bank for Biden, <laughs> but but I would argue that that was a very small performative gesture. Yes, and while the um the like the like, organize... like drinking the water in Flint, exactly. Whereas the organizing of um the um of of, of the um of all those individual centrists into one big blob behind coalescing behind Biden was the um, the the meaningful contribution that he made. Yeah, I mean, the, and the thing that was just particularly infuriating to me about that when it comes to just evaluating him as a human being is that before he did that and after he made that call to get Pete and Amy out of the race and coalesce everybody behind Biden, he would then go on TV or on YouTube or, you know, wherever you make these videos hectoring young people about how they don't get involved enough and they have to come out and vote. Meanwhile, you just conspired to destroy the candidate that mobilized over a million young people to go and volunteer and go and vote and go and do all, all this shit. And it's just like, like out of one side of his don't mouth. clap. Vote. Right. Don't. But well, I actually did prepare. I actually. So this is from 2018. I'm gonna, just going to hold this up because we're doing this live. I'm going to do this the sort of. Um, bootleg sort of way but this is in 2018 approaching the 2018 midterms i'll just play a minute of this just the it's it's just shocking here it is in the last midterms election in 2014 fewer than one in five young people voted one in five not two in five or three in one in five. Yeah, we know. One in five. <laughs> <laughs> Is it any wonder this Congress doesn't reflect your values and your priorities? Are, are you surprised by that? This whole project of self-government only works if everybody's doing their part. Don't tell me your vote doesn't matter. I've, I've won states in the presidential election because of five, 10, 20 votes per precinct. Okay, I mean, it's just absolutely shocking the lack of self awareness it takes to talk like that. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, you know, fewer than one in five people voted in the 2014 midterms. Then he goes on and he says, um, uh, what, what, what was the second thing he said? Something like, you know, uh, you know, if you don't think your vote matters, 
uh, you know, um, you shouldn't be you know, surprised. Congress does. That's right. Realize. That was the second thing. Don't be surprised that your values and priorities are not represented in government. And then the third thing he says is I won precinct. I won states by winning precincts by five, 10, 20. Votes. Like you don't understand your role in the devolution of people's participation in the process. Like, yeah, they voted for you twice. Young people came out and voted for you twice. They still, after voting for you, did not see their values and priorities represented in government. That's why they didn't vote in 2014 and didn't vote in 2016. Yeah. Um, and and so, yeah, you you won by mobilizing young people, but then you let them down. You screwed mm-hmm. up. Your presidency was a failure. And so now they don't vote anymore. And yeah. and to to talk you to walk right past that point and just not. And this is a pattern of his. He has this like pathological, just like inability to understand his role in mm-hmm. in in what has happened to this country over the last twelve years. Is a, a, a pathological narcissist. Yeah, I mean, it's just. I, it's, I think the way he incredible. handled that birthday party demonstrated <laughs> that all the, the worst party. things that people who would go further than we would, you know, people who would psychoanalyze Obama and say. He's a he's a deranged narcissist. He actually proved those people right. Yeah, the, the, with the, the way he handled that, the, like I wouldn't have gone that far. Yeah, and, and and something else I keep thinking of, and I'm sure you've had this experience. Um, look, a lot of times your most bitter enemies have uh, valid critiques. You know, you might not mm-hmm. want to hear them. Yeah, I keep thinking back on how the Republican argument against Obama from the beginning was that he he is not a, a a political actor of substance he's a celebrity phenomena he's mm-hmm. a global right. celebrity phenomena right there's nothing behind this and i remember the mccain campaign actually running ads to that effect he's yeah. the biggest celebrity in the world yeah Something like that and you know what they were right they yeah. were right. they were right we were wrong i mean right. i don't know how you voted back then but I, yeah. I certainly believed in Obama back then. And yeah. Everything the Republicans said about him, they were right. You know, yeah. not, not that they were offering anything better, but their critique yeah. of Obama was 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 dead on. I mean, you really yeah. want to play devil's advocate? Everything the Hillary Clinton campaign said about him was right in the primaries. This guy has a messiah complex. Mm-hmm. He thinks he's going to come in and just magically bring people together without actually trying. He wasn't a backslapper. You know, he kind of considered himself above it all. Yet he was going to unite the two major parties without going in and doing the Bill Clinton bullshit where you cut deals like he thought his presence. I mean, this is a true this guy. I mean, he really does. I mean, this is a narcissist. My presence here, you know, as a as a mixed race guy who came in and promised hope and change and speaks in such inspirational language. My presence in the Oval Office is going to make everything okay. Mm hmm. Right. That seemed yeah. to be what he thought. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, no, and and no, and the the Republicans were like were correct in in that um in in that criticism for sure, you know, and 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 you know there were Democrats who recognized it at the time too. I mean, many of the sort of the people supporting Hillary in that two thousand eight um, primary um, sort of argued that. She was actually more rooted in the political nitty gritty and you know all that stuff, and you know that was true. I, I mean, obviously, I'm no fan of Hillary, um, but um, um, but um, she she is she is somebody who was um, willing to get her hands dirty and you know talk to people and pass legislation and stuff. Well, he he represents a next level devolution from what the Clintons did to the presidency. Like, look, you know, at the end of the day, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton were really, really into the details of policy, whatever whatever else has been going on with them. And Obama Obama took it to the next level of just, hey, you know, I'm going to do photo ops. And his post-presidency reflects that. It's it's really the final apotheosis of being of the presidency as another form of celebrity, uh, yeah. of being 
president being a movie star being the same thing where it's about brand building. And when you get out of office, you're going to go hang out with Bruce Springsteen and do a Netflix special that. Yeah. And as completely vacuous. And as we've seen, and as we then saw, I mean, then it was, then Trump was just the sort of the dystopian logical extension of all all that. Right. Right. Where, um, you know, literally the whole point is to be on TV. I, I'm just wondering when Ellen is going to foxtrot with him on a uh, on on TV, and well, oh, she's got to get her job back. Him. She's she's yeah. out of the game now. Yeah. But you know, it, Eliza, you just mentioned Trump. Who, who's got that moral authority now that now that Ellen's gone? He, I mean, he's never going to land over. <laughs> right. She won't. She won't <laughs> right. Even she won't stoop that low. Well, you know, it's funny because Eliza, you no, just never. brought up Trump. I, I and... do believe in it. But... <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, you you did write in the article that Trump has somehow found a way to be less public minded in his post presidency than Obama. Um, And now the way I feel about that and look, there is a little bit of an asterisk here because Trump uh, may be in the early stages of his reelection campaign. Right. Right. Um, So it's not entirely a post presidency. It could just be like a sort of halftime between. Yeah, it's really too early. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. It's it's really too early to say that's for sure. Right. Yeah. But what I would say is that Trump has been more, much more engaged than Obama in his post presidency. Uh, Trump is still having rallies. He's still Absolutely. he's still out there rallying his base, keeping his base engaged. Now, it could be because he plans to run again. Right. But but so far, he has not written a book. He has not cashed in getting hundreds of thousands of dollars in speaking fees to large institutions, probably because they won't have them. But either way, like he hasn't really cashed in in the way that Bill Clinton and Barack Obama have cashed in. On their I think that's true. Life. Well, and, the, and actually, I mean, there are conservative organizations that would pay him to go to. His- yeah, and I, I think that's. I, I think it's true. On the other hand, um, I I would say that um, that Trump's whole political project is even more narcissistic than Obama's. I mean, in the sense that the the very um, idea of getting into politics was never about anything more than his own sure. brand sure. and sure. even I mean the, it was sort of an experiment to um, raise the value of the Trump properties I mean I, I think he didn't he didn't um, by all accounts at, at all expect to win in 2016 it was really um, the whole campaign was really just an advertisement for him. So, I mean, so the, uh, so, so I, I wouldn't, I, so, so yes, I think he's been more engaged in politics, but I, I think, I think he's, um, he, he can't be said to really be more public spirited or, um, or publicly public minded than Obama, given the, his entire, I mean, there has been just nothing public spirit i don't think there's even a um you know i think many right-wingers are quite sincere in their crazy beliefs um i don't think that's true of trump Um, i think this has never been about anything but branding for him um sure um but yeah he he has been he has been doing his rallies and you know been more um engaged um he he he, um um i i don't think that we'll see a Trump presidency again, but um, I really hope I'm right about that. Well, you know, I mean, I, 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 I don't look, know, man. I, I, if, I they, have to... if, they, if they run Kamala and Trump is running again, I, I mean, not even Trump, anybody. I'll, I'll mm-hmm. throw a rock out my window and hit somebody who won't beat Kamala in a general election. Like, who yeah, would, no, I think who, that's right. Who wouldn't beat Kamala? That, yeah, that, I mean, that's look, a shorter list of people. Was was the Obama presidency much more than a branding exercise? I mean, I just keep going back to that. Like, what was this guy's goal? Because the big play that he tried to make resulted in Romney care after going to, you know, uh, left wing Democrats districts and twisting their arm to vote for a right wing version of an already compromised health care bill. And that was it. That was it. We got nothing after that. Now, he says, well, the uh, 
Republicans blocked me after that. Well, the reason you got shellacked in those midterms is because you had a two year window to accomplish a lot of stuff and you accomplished very little. And the thing that you did accomplish still rendered millions and millions of people without health insurance and millions more with expensive health insurance that they couldn't really use. And yeah. so and it's, so it's what amazing. it's I mean, what was the Obama presidency besides a branding exercise? Yeah. Because you're, you're, it, you're forcing yeah. people to pay yeah. for essentially worthless health care yeah. right. after, after yeah. the deductible. His yeah. stock remains yeah. high personally. People yeah. liked him. He's a likable yeah. guy. And look, the, one yeah. of the reasons I supported him in 2008 as strongly as I did is because I did think he was a great role model. I did think it would be great for the country to elect the first African-American president. And sure. I even supported him on that basis in 2012. And I hung out at Occupy Wall Street. I was disillusioned, yeah, yeah. but yeah, I figured, yeah. well, Romney is really horrible. And when the history books are written, I think the first black president should be a two term president. I don't think the history book should be written that the first black president was this sort of um, one off response to the horrible Bush years. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, I did care about that. But the thing is, he never seemed to care about anything but that. And that's yeah. why his post presidency has been what it is, because all yeah. he did as president was be yeah. there and yeah. trust that his presence there yes. was, was so revolutionary. That he didn't yes. actually have to do anything revolutionary. Yes, it was revolutionary. No, I, I, no, I think I, I, I think you're right. I mean, and then I mean, and 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 then we saw, um, and so I mean, thinking, I think, yeah, I think future um, historians will definitely um, draw a straight line from um, Obama to Trump. That this was really sure. like this sure. was really the the period. Of, um, of of presidency as um, as uh, you know a, a presidency as as branding in a particularly um, hollow way. 